Welcome to the Captain's Chair, a special presentation of the Starfleet Virtual Fleet Museum. Here you can explore the bridges of five of Starfleet's most distinguished vessels and learn about their history, operations, and those who served aboard them. Hi, I'm George Takei. Welcome to my home. Before Hikaru Sulu was promoted to Captain of the Excelsior, he served as helmsman under Captain James T. Kirk aboard the ship that started it all, the USS Enterprise. When I was first offered the role of Sulu on Star Trek, I met with our real-life captain, Gene Roddenberry. Gene was studying a map of the world when he was choosing a name for my character. He came to the South Seas part of that map and saw the Sulu Sea off the coast of the Philippines. Well, the waters of the sea touch all shores, he said. And so it became my character's name. I consider Star Trek fans the bosses I really work for. Not the producers, not the executives of the studio, not the network people. It's the fans and their dedication and support that has made Star Trek this extraordinary phenomenon. Welcome to the bridge of the USS Enterprise 1701D. I'm Michael Dorn. You probably already know me as Commander Worf, the only Klingon officer in Starfleet. Klingons are among the most interesting characters on Star Trek. Now, a turning point in Worf's character development came when Dan Curry and I worked out a complete style of Klingon martial arts. Now, the focus those moves provided transformed Worf from a loud, animalistic character into a highly trained warrior under perfect control. To work with the Next Generation cast, with these actors, I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world. I'm proud of the work we did on the Next Generation and that we continually do on Deep Space Nine. Hi, I'm Jonathan Frakes. When I first auditioned for the role of Commander Riker on Star Trek The Next Generation, I had no idea that would have such an important effect on the next, hopefully, 30 years of my life. Commander Riker has changed a little bit over the years. After the first season in which uh, I was encouraged never to smile and to keep what Gene referred to as a uh, Gary Cooper glint in my eye, they'd realized that the character was in fact a little too dry. So I uh, was allowed and encouraged to have a little more Frakes sneak into Riker. And as a result, there were a few more smiles in the show. As Commander Riker has said many times, he wants to captain and helm his own ship. Unfortunately for me, there is a uh, rather important British actor with no hair who sits there most of the time. And until he's bumped up to Admiral, I think I will uh, stay on as commander. You know, once I was in a parade, in Hollywood parade, and the children were yelling and screaming as we were waving, you know, like that. And I could hear the people saying, well, who is he? You know, because I'm waving and smiling, you see. And they said, oh, I know. That's the one. You look so different without that thing on your face. You're blind. You're, and you look so different. But I'm not LeVar. I'm Avery Brooks. And uh, I play the role of Captain Benjamin Sisko. Part of the reason that, that I decided to do this role was the pilot. And I thought it was an extraordinary uh, script where, you know, you were looking at a man who uh, was trying to find peace, you know, after suffering tragic loss, who at the same time had to defend humankind to some other intelligence in the universe. One of the things we must do is to give children some positive look at the world, indeed the universe. Star Trek helps to do that. Greetings, and welcome to the bridge of my ship, the Starship Voyager. Technically, of course, the ship belongs to Captain Catherine Janeway, but I like to think of it as mine as well. The part of Captain Janeway brings with it an amazing personal freedom. We're alone out there, stranded in the Delta Quadrant, the only humans for thousands of light years, 
Janeway is no saint, and she's no psychotherapist, but she knows that the ship can go down if there's too much sadness or loneliness among the crew. She has to make herself available as a human, one among the lost, not just a leader issuing commands from her chair. I look forward to many more seasons exploring the Delta Quadrant, many more adventures in which the character of Catherine Janeway can continue to grow. And not just grow, to grow beautifully. Deactivating Captain's Chair. Thank <laughs> you.